Today, we're gonna talk about money. This is one of my favorite type of videos to watch when I'm on YouTube. So hopefully you guys enjoy this type of content as well. But I split all my different revenue streams of income into this pie chart here, split off by the least amount of income all the way over to the most. So let's take a look at what different streams of income I'm earning as a designer and you can earn as well. So the least amount of income that is split into one of these categories is gonna be super peer. Now, Superpeer is kind of a mentoring service that I run sometimes, and I just have it up in case people need extra help. But it's not something that I'm always actively pursuing. I just do it because it's fun and it feels good to help people. So kind of a side hustle, if you want to call it that. Then next up, still education-based, and most of these are going to be education-based, but this one is going to be lecturing. Now, I am a professor sometimes at a university here in Spain, so this accounts for a very small percentage. Now, I do it not because of the money, but number one, I think it's pretty cool to be a professor, to be in-person teaching students that are a little bit closer to my age, honestly. So I think it's quite a cool thing to do, but I do it honestly because I, I quite enjoy it. The Money isn't that crazy, but I just think it's something cool to do. Next up, we have Tilebit. Now, I recently launched this SaaS about five, six months ago. So it's so far doing really well, but because it's only been six months this whole year, it's hard to really put it into this pie chart. But if we have to consider maybe the growth that it's gonna take in the next six months, it might be further down the list. But so far, this is a pretty small chunk of my revenue this year. Now, there are opportunities next year to build more streams of income, and we're gonna get into them later on in the video. But so far, these three account for a very small percentage of my income. Now, it's one thing to note that with a lot of these these streams of income that I'm creating here, I am trying to be as passive about it as possible. What that means is the way that I run my super peer or lecturing or Tilebit even, is that I'm either outsourcing as much as I can from it, obviously not lecturing, but for example, Tilebit, I'm outsourcing the creation of the next 500 unique uh, components. So that's something that can still grow without me and can grow on its own, but I don't have to necessarily be creating the components themselves. So that's something to consider when you're taking a look at this bigger pie chart. You might be thinking, how is he doing all these things? I'm not. I'm just running these things, if that makes sense. Now, the next stream of income that I have made is going to be AdSense. Now, AdSense is one of those things that is very tricky to get down. Some people make a lot of money from AdSense and some people don't make that much money. Now, I unfortunately am in the realm that does not make that much money from it, but it's still a decent chunk of income and here we're making 6% of my total income is coming from AdSense. Now AdSense is going to fluctuate along the months and this last year there was two different months where I didn't post just because I didn't feel like it honestly but that is one of the one of the key things that you need to consider if you want to go into YouTube and design it's that it might not be as sustainable as you would imagine it to be. But one thing to consider with AdSense is that although it might fluctuate every month, it's still a quite passive thing to do. You still need to upload and you still need to kind of be on top of it, but you don't necessarily need to be there every single day in order for AdSense to work in your favor. Now let's move on to some of these bigger chunks of the pie here. The next one is going to be affiliate commissions. So affiliate commissions happen in a very smooth way. Now, I'm a big fan of affiliate commissions. If you don't know what they are, it's when I do a video of Webflow, for example, or Figma or Framer or whatever. And I might say, if you use the link to Webflow, I get a little chunk of that payment if you happen to go into a payment plan or something like that. And I really like these kind of deals because I'm talking about things that I would talk about anyways through YouTube, sometimes through Twitter, through LinkedIn, through whatever. But I mean, if the flow is organic and the content fits really well with the affiliate link, then it's a win-win for the person that ends up clicking the link and gets the information that they need and want. And then me who might make a little commission off of that. So this year that has been a 10% of my total income. Now this has been growing year after year and the more views and subscribers that the channel gets, it's gonna keep growing and growing. So this is mainly just a numbers game. So the more people that end up watching a video, that little 1% might click the link, which maybe might go into a payment plan, which maybe might go on to the next month, the next month, the next month. And so that results in a little recurring commission for me. Now, next up is gonna be sponsors. So sponsors has been a very interesting thing this year because I'm growing and the channel's growing a little bit. I'm getting a lot more requests to do sponsorships. On average, I get around maybe 10 emails every single month asking me to do a sponsorship video. And so far this year, I've only 
only done about maybe three, four, five different sponsorships. So I'm trying to be very, very picky with who I actually want to be sponsoring the channel. Number one, because I obviously care about the information that I'm feeding you guys, right? If I say go buy this tool and it ends up being really bad, then I would obviously feel bad. And yeah, my reputation would just tank because it's not a good product. So I'm gonna be a sellout. So I'm very, very careful with who I'm actually comfortable sponsoring the channel. A couple of the people I would be comfortable with are for example, Figma, Notion, they sponsor me this year. Webflow, that'd be really cool. I don't know, you know, big names of companies that I already use, I'd be more than comfortable having them pay me for an ad. That's totally fine. But if it's a random tool and I haven't really used it and the feedback isn't good and it's just, it's a lot of money, right? Then yeah, I wouldn't feel comfortable. To give you an example, earlier last year, I got a an offer for $10,000 to do a video of a tool that I don't like using. And it was maybe the craziest moment of my life where I was like, okay, I can actually say no to these guys and feel comfortable doing so because I know that in the future, that money might mean nothing compared to the reputation that I might lose if I do this video, right? So that was a pretty cool moment to be able to say no to that just for a, a simple sponsorship video. but. Yeah, some plans next year regarding sponsorships is that I have signed on a really, really cool company to do a couple videos in the long term. So I'm really excited about that. One of my favorite, favorite companies. And you guys can probably guess who they are based on how I'm, I'm speaking right now, but more of that next year. So let's move on to the next one. So sponsors is gonna be 12.5% of the revenue this year. Next up is gonna be paid collabs. Now this can kind of mix in with lecturing as well, but not necessarily because lecturing, I, I split off into going to a university and being a professor and being in that official manner. And then paid collabs is gonna be like if you guys saw me on the Flux channel this year or last year, then you might know what I mean by that. It's other channels and other creators paying me to go on their channel and create videos for them. So that has been a nice chunk of the revenue. And of course I enjoy making videos. So it's a very easy fit for me to do, right? If I can take what I'm doing now, sit down, make a tutorial, but I get paid for it even more than I would for I don't know, for an affiliate commission or for AdSense, honestly, then yeah, I find it, I find it to be great. The only thing is that I stopped doing these collabs because it was a lot of work and maybe not the most prudent use of my time, but it was a great learning experience. And so, yeah, I'm happy with, with the way it turned out. But that being said, I'm doing less of them next year, or even if I do any of them at all. So we'll see how that goes in terms of the whole pie and making money from, from paid collabs. But I'm totally fine if this 16% honestly just doesn't exist next year. It's less money for me, but I don't know, what's, what's my time worth really, right? So that leaves us with the last chunk of the pie. And I'll give you guys a billion dollars if you can guess what this is. And it's not gonna be much of a surprise, but agency work has been the majority, well, half of all the income that I've made this year. Now, this is my cut from the agency. The actual agency revenue has been way more than this, but what I bring myself and what I'm not yet paying myself, I'm just still reinvesting. So this number could be much, much bigger, but just for the sake of the video, we'll keep it at 50%. So agency stuff. Agency is a tricky one because you have these ebbs and flows of income if you don't have and you don't sell retainer services. Now, luckily we are getting more and more into retainers. Now, of course you have the typical subscription agencies where they sell you a one man team designer to do 30 different things at one task per day or something like that and they charge 12k a month or something ridiculous that's not necessarily where we're going we are more of a traditional agency where you kind of sit down and we'll do work with the client directly so it's it's not as passive as I'd like it to be. And I'm gonna do a video of how I actually run my agency coming up. So leave a comment if you wanna see that. But this is gonna be the most important thing moving on into next year as well. Now, I haven't even actually launched my agency yet. By agency, what I mean is people that DM me through Twitter, through Instagram, who email me about a project that they have for their business. And usually I will just pass it on to a freelancer, but it's still under the Arnau Ross brand. So I'm taking myself out of that brand currently, where working on a site right now and we actually just got accepted into the Webflow Experts program and we haven't even launched. So that is absolutely amazing. We're off to a great start in this world. So there's gonna be way more videos talking about agency stuff, how to run your agency, scaling, how to manage teams. And honestly, I think it's a great segue because 
as I grow as a designer and I start managing teams and I deal with different issues, you guys will come along and see those issues firsthand. So that's really cool. Now, next year, let's talk about next year for a second. I want to make, obviously, growth needs to happen. So I want to make more money, but it's not all about the money. So there's different things that I want to do next year. Number one is I'm launching my own course and academy. That is super, super exciting. So you guys know that I obviously love teaching, lecturing, super peer, and then going on people's channels. So I was thinking, why not put that all together and create my own academy? Now, what that's going to look like is your typical course where you can go from zero to hero in any tool. But I think it'd also be really interesting to do boot camps at some point. And that's going to come later on, maybe Q3 of 2024. But one of the primary things that I want to do is launch my own school so that I have control of the stuff that I teach. I want to be able to, to create cool projects for you guys. So that's going to come next year and we're almost done with it. The branding's pretty much chef's kiss there. But again, these things take time. So who, who knows when the first course will come out? Hopefully early 2024 next year. So yeah, a lot of things are coming, but I'm pretty happy with how things went this year. A couple words about Tilebit and launching a SaaS and making money from that SaaS and all those things. Yeah, I think it was a very, very good experience. I think looking at the at the pie chart now, it maybe wasn't even as profitable as I want it to be. There's thousands of people using the tool, but Again, it's a very, very new tool. We're still working on it daily. It's something that's gonna grow with the channel and that was the entire point of it. So like, can't really ask for more, right? The more I grow and the more the channel grows, the more I'll be able to talk about it and show the power of the tool. So hopefully next year, this tile bit chart of the pie and then agency and oh, we deleted that one. And sponsors, maybe not. Affiliate, maybe not. AdSense, I don't really care about AdSense. So yeah, I think tile bit, agency, which I'm officially launching as an expert in a couple months, and then my own courses. So hopefully those three pillars are gonna be what's driving the revenue next year. And I plan to do one of these every year. I think that's gonna be really cool. So you guys can see how the businesses are going up or down or whatever. You guys can compare and be like, oh, he's not doing as many sponsors. He's not really doing as many affiliates or whatever. He's doing more affiliates, less affiliates. I don't know, could be cool. So if you guys have any questions about any of the ways that I make money and how you can make money as well as a designer, let me know in the comments because I answer every single comment. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.